Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Gems of Knowledge. So I am here with another video on the separating the components of a mixture. So here we are going to learn how the uh, components of a mixture can be separated. Okay, so before starting the video make sure to subscribe to my channel and also click on the bell button to get the notification as soon as I post my new videos. Okay, so let's start with the video. So here they have given heterogeneous mixtures can be separated into their respective constituents by simple physical methods like sieving, hand picking, filtration etc. So there are many physical methods by which we can separate the heterogeneous mixtures. So these are some special techniques which is used in separating the components of the mixture. Okay. So in that the first one is nothing but evaporation. Evaporation why it is used? Evaporation is used for separating a volatile component from a non-volatile component by heating the mixture. So here we are using two components, one will be solute and the volatile component is nothing but the solvent. Okay, so solvent and solute, we are using both the things here and one will be evaporated and the other will be left behind. So this process is nothing but called as evaporation. Okay, so it is used for separating these two mixtures. One is volatile mixture and one more is the non-volatile mixture by heating it. Okay. Next process is centrifugation. So, this is used for separating denser particles and lighter particles from a mixture by using centrifuging machines. By using centrifuging machines. Okay, so by using machines what we can do here is we can separate the denser particles, the thicker particles as well as the lighter particles here. So, this is uh, done by using a centrifuging machine. Okay, next comes decantation. It is used for separating a mixture of immiscible liquids. The two immiscible liquids can be separated by using the process decantation. Then comes sublimation. It is used to separate a mixture of sublimable component from a non-sublimable component by heating the mixture. So sublimation is nothing but the uh, process where the solid is directly changed into the gaseous state without coming into the liquid state. Okay, so that process is called as sublimation. So how, uh, so where we can use this? We can use this in separating the mixture of sublimable component. Okay, if the two mixtures are mixed in which one is sublimable component and the other is non-sublimable component, which will easily turn out into the uh, gaseous state and which is uh, the one more component will not turn out. So that the component which can easily sublimable is separated by using this technique. Okay. The fifth one is chromatography. Why it is used? It is used for separating colored components from a liquid by using a filter paper. So we can separate the colored component by using filter paper okay uh, from one particular liquid we can separate the different colors component okay so that process is done by the technique of chromatography then distillation it is used for separating a mixture of miscible liquid by boiling the mixture then cooling and condensing the vapors so here what we are doing is we are using two miscible liquids okay and one will be having the less boiling point whereas other will be having the highest boiling point so there are two techniques here in distillation only the two techniques First one is simple distillation and the second one is fractional distillation. So, these are used to separate the two miscible liquids. Okay. So, let us learn what is simple distillation and what is fractional distillation. Okay. So, here you can see simple distillation. It is used for separating a mixture of two miscible liquids having sufficient difference in their boiling point. So, here the two difference, different liquids are used which is having a bit difference between their boiling points. It can be separated. Both the liquids can be separated. Then in the fractional distillation what is happening is it is used for separating a mixture of two or more miscible liquids. If they are more than two also it can be separated by using the fractional distillation process. 
whose difference is boiling whose difference in boiling point is less than 25 kelvin so here the condition is to use the fractional distillation the boiling point between the two or three liquids must be less than 25 kelvin but here there is they have the sufficient difference there must be more difference to use the simple distillation if there is less difference then we are using the fractional distillation okay then you can see the seventh one separation of components of air so even the components of air can be separated so this is used to obtain different gases from the air to differentiate the gases from the air this techniques is used whereas the last technique is purification of solid by crystallization process so to obtain the pure sample from the impure sample so the one more process is used here that is crystallization it is used to take out the pure component from the impure sample okay so all the processes one by one we are going to study in details now okay so here the first technique is nothing but the evaporation process you can see into the image here a beaker in which water is present is kept on the flame and to above above this beaker a watch glass is kept in which ink is poured okay and you all know that ink is a mixture of dye in water so what we are going to separate here is dye from water so as the beaker as you can see the water is present into the beaker as it is getting heated you can see the vapors coming out from the ink from the watch glass okay and after some time you will notice that there is no difference into the watch glass it means the vapors are completely stopped so now you can think that the particularly what we got here into the watch glass is purely a dye and the water which is present into the dye is been evaporated so this is nothing but the evaporation process so this is the way how we can separate the volatile component that is solvent from its non volatile solute by the process of evaporation yeah so the second process is nothing but the centrifugation so this is the method you can see the image here this is nothing but the instrument of centrifugation it is called a centrifuging machine okay and if we take some milk into this centrifuging machine and spin it rapidly the cream from the milk will be separated because the cream is less denser than the milk so let us also know what are the applications of this techniques so the first application is it is used in the diagnostic laboratories for urine as well as the blood test okay then uh, the secondary uh, it is used in the dairies and homes to separate butter from the cream and as well as it is used the same technique is used in washing machine to squeeze out water from the wet clothes So here you can see the image of decantation process here the separating funnel is used to separate two immiscible liquids immiscible liquids are those liquids which cannot be uh, mixed okay so those liquids are called as immiscible liquid and by using the separating funnel we can separate the two immiscible liquids so you can see into the image there are two layers one is of kerosene oil and one more is of water so actually what happens here is when the two liquids kerosene oil as well as water is mixed and if we pour that mixture into the separating funnel and kept it undisturbed for some time what happens is they both form different layers one is uh, the water will form the below layer whereas the kerosene oil will form the topmost layer okay then what we can do here is we can open the stop cork of the separating funnel and pour out the lower layer of water carefully and as soon as the oil layer kerosene layer reaches near the stop cork we have to close it again so this is the way how we can separate two immiscible liquids so where we can use this what are the application of this process it is to separate the mixture of oil and water by this we can separate both oil and water and also it is useful in the extraction of iron from its ore 
yes so the fourth process is nothing but the sublimation so in the image you can see a china dish is there and a funnel is kept inverted and to the end of the funnel where there is a hole into that hole a cotton is plugged into it okay and from below the china dish is heated so here what happens is in the case of sublimation two types of salts are mixed you can see here this is one is ammonium chloride and the another one is the normal salt which we are using two salts are mixed here and we are going to separate two salts by the process of sublimation so what happens here is we have to go on heating this china dish and after a few a few minutes we can observe that the solid ammonium chloride is accumulated at the side of the separating uh it's sorry inverted funnel as the vapors of the ammonium chloride will, will pass through it and as we you can see into the upper part we have deposited the cotton there so the vapors will not pass outside instead they will get deposited into inside layer of the inverted funnels so this is the way how we can separate the ammonium chloride as well as the salt the salt will be left behind into the china dish whereas the ammonium chloride will be accumulated onto the side layers of the uh, inverted funnel so you can see the fifth technique here which is nothing but called as chromatography so here you can see two images the image a shows a paper in which a spot of ink has been placed and a line has been drawn just to focus that uh, spot of ink okay then that is nothing but a uh, paper is nothing but called as filter paper now that same filter paper is dipped into a jar in which water is placed okay uh, the jar is containing water there and the filter paper is dipped into that such that the drop the spot of ink must be dipped into the water then after few minutes you can see that that the level of water will slowly rising up onto the uh, particular ink spot and as we know that ink is nothing but the mixture of dye as well as water so here what happens is the dye will separate its components it is prepared by two or more colors the dye is prepared by two or more colors so what happens here is the colored components will be slowly slowly it will get separated from each other and we can see different types of colors present inside that particular dye so this technique was actually started from greek because in greek word chroma means color so this technique was uh, first invented by greek people as they used to uh, first as they first used this uh, technique in separation of colors itself okay and we, uh, today we can use this process in uh, colors of the dye to separate the colors of the dye also the pigments of the natural colors and also we can separate the drugs from the blood by using the same technique so here you can see the process of distillation the sixth one is nothing but the distillation it contains two processes one is simple distillation and the second one is fractional distillation so the image which is on to the screen is nothing but of the simple distillation process where you can see distillation flask is present and to this distillation flask a thermometer is fitted as well as a a uh, water outlet is fitted and a condenser is into it okay and at last you can see a beaker is placed to take out the one miscible liquid from the other so this is basically used to separate two miscible liquids so here basically we have taken two liquids which is acetone as well as water mixture of acetone and water is used here and what we have done is we are giving the heat to this distillation flask and we can see at some temperature at the temperature at which the acetone boils what happens is this acetone will uh, form the vapors and directly it will condensate into this beaker so you can see here the water outlet is present onto that water outlet cold water will be passing uh, so that the vapors of the acetone will form into the liquid and it will be taken into that particular uh, beaker 
so it means here the acetone which is prized it will condense here into this condenser and it will be con it will be collected from the outlet condenser outlet and it will be formed into this beaker and what is left behind is nothing but the water so this is how we can separate two miscible liquids so here you can see one more type of distillation which is called as fractional distillation so the main difference between the simple distillation as well as the fractional distillation is nothing but only the fractionating column which is present here this fractionating column is present in fractional distillation whereas it is not present in the simple distillation so you can see a small bits like structure present into this fractionating column it is nothing but it helps into the uh, cooling of the vapors so this fractional distillation is used to separate the mixtures of two or more miscible liquids where the difference between their boiling point is less than 25 kelvin if it is less than 25 kelvin then only this fractionating uh, fractional distillation is used or else we will use the simple distillation process so except this differences everything all the process is relatively same as the simple distillation process so here you can see the next process that is separation of components of air so basically here the first air will be taken as consideration then the air is compressed and cool by increasing pressure and decreasing temperature okay the air will be taken and it will be compressed as well as cool by increasing pressure as well as decreasing temperature then that air will be converted into liquid air then the same air will be allowed to warm up slowly in the fractional distillation column here again the fractional distillation column will be used and the liquid air which we get here is allowed to warm up slowly and then we can see that the gases get separated at different heights so below you can see a table where the oxygen argon and nitrogen has been separated at the boiling point 183 degree celsius 186 degree celsius and 190 Six degrees Celsius, and you can see the percentage of oxygen we get here. That is, at one eighty three degrees Celsius, we get twenty point nine percent of oxygen. One eighty six degrees Celsius, we get zero point nine percent of argon, and at one ninety six degrees Celsius, we get seventy eight point one degree nitrogen. so here you can see the same process apparatus has been shown you can see here this is nothing but the filter okay how from where the air is passed inside and under the pressure air is compressed here then the hot air will be blown into one more column here where you can see in the spiral uh, uh, wire or the spiral pipe we can say the freezing cold water is uh, moving inside due to that freezing cold water the air will be cooled and again it will be compressed and that compressed air will be moved through the separator here where you can see the carbon dioxide will be coming out as a dry ice and the remaining gases will move again inside the expansion jet here okay where the liquid air you can see where the liquid air will enter the fractional distillation column through which the nitrogen is kept out as well as the argon is kept out from this uh, openings and the remaining is nothing but the oxygen gas which will be collected in this beaker so the next process here is nothing but the crystallization so here you have to take 5 grams of impure copper sulfate in a china dish okay then you have to dissolve it into the minimum amount of water by using minimum amount of water you have to dissolve this impure copper sulfate then you have to filter out all the impurities using the filter paper then again you have to the remaining uh, water must be evaporated from this copper sulfate solution to get a saturated solution so after filtering all the impurities out what you have to do is the water must be evaporated okay then after after the evaporation of all the water whatever the saturated solution you are getting you have to cover that solution with a filter paper and you have to leave it 
अनडिस्टर्ब द रूम टेम्परेचर टू कूल डाउन स्लोली द होल डे देन यू कैन सी द क्रिस्टल्स ऑफ कॉपर सल्फेड विल बी ऑप्टेन्ड इन टू दी चाइना डिश सो दिस प्रोसेस इज नथिंग बट कॉल्ड एज क्रिस्टलाइजेशन so depending on these all techniques there are few questions which are present on the page number 24 in your textbook so in that the first question is the one which you can uh, you which you can see on to the screen the first one is how will you separate a mixture containing kerosene and petrol in the bracket again they have given something what is that difference in their boiling point is more than 25 degree celsius which are miscible with each other so the in the bracket they have given us a hint there the difference in their boiling point is more than 25 degree celsius it means here we have to use uh, the simple distillation process not the fractional distillation because fractional distillation is valid only in the case when the boiling point is less than 25 degree celsius so as i told you the answer to this question is nothing but the simple distillation process so you can see the distillation process the diagram of the distillation process on to the screen here okay so here what you have to do is take the mixture in the distillation flask with thermometer fitted to it so you have to take the uh, mixture into the distillation flask and you can see there uh, into the distillation flask there is a thermometer which is fitted to it then what you have to do is heat this mixture slowly and you can see that the petrol has the lowest boiling point okay so the petrol as it is having the lowest boiling point it will start vaporizing before and it condenses in the condenser and it finally gets collected into the beaker so the petrol is the one which will be vaporizing earlier than the kerosene and it will be finally collected into the beaker so the second question you can see here is name the techniques to separate the following okay so here three more questions has been asked into this question so how can we separate this things we have to name the techniques okay so the first one is butter from curd second one is salt from sea water and the third one is camphor from salt so the answer which is uh, so the letters which are written in the red color is nothing but the answer to your question so centrifugation is the technique from which we can remove the butter from the curd then evaporation is the technique to uh, separate salt from sea water as well as sublimation is the technique to separate camphor from the salt next question is what type of mixtures are separated by the techniques of crystallization so we have to answer what type of mixtures can be separated by using the technique of crystallization so here the answer is crystallization is a process which separates a pure solid from its solution in the form of crystals so what we can do is out of the solution of a product we can remove the pure solid crystals from it okay so this process is nothing but called as crystallization so i hope everything is clear to you here if you are having any doubts regarding this you can comment me down below and i'll be back with another video so till then stay tuned and stay connected thank you